Uh, hello there, assalamu alaikum, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dr. Ali Al Shehri, I'm a consultant cardiologist. I will be talking a little bit about the effect of smoking on the cardiovascular and the systemic uh, uh, problems associated with that. As you all know, smoking is probably the most important factor leading to uh, coronary artery disease. Uh, I see a lot of patients who are coming uh, with a heart attack to the hospital and they are young, usually in their 40s or even below 50s. And the most common factor related to their acute MI is actually smoking. So it is a very abundant uh, problem. And then you will see some of the slides about the incidence of smoking in the different Gulf countries. And we are unfortunately scoring one of the highest uh, regions. Now, uh, smoking, uh, has been shown in the studies that smokers, they live on the average 10 years less than non-smokers. And if somebody starts smoking in their early adulthood, they're expected, 50% of them are expected not to reach mid 60s because they die earlier because of the side effects and the complications related to smoking. Now, you have to know that Smoking, this is again the slide that I showed you that 10 years shorter lifespan for smokers than non-smokers. And this has been studies in a famous uh, uh, retrospective study called the doctors, uh, uh, British doctor study. And they looked at healthy, average, middle-aged doctors who continue to smoke. Although they continue to exercise, they continue to do good physical activity and uh, uh, definitely watching their diet and their cholesterol and other stuff, they still die on the average 10 years earlier than those who did not smoke. Again, if you start smoking early, half of them will not be reaching the late 60s uh, uh, if they continue to smoke. Now, you have to remember that we have also good news on the other hand. If you stop smoking at age 40, you will gain about nine years to your average life. If you stop at 50s, you gain about six years. And if you stop at 60s, you gain on the average three to five years. Now, we are talking about people who started smoking very early in their adulthood and continue to smoke throughout. Now, shisha has the same effect, even worse than cigarette smokers. There was a study that came out from Riyadh about 10 years ago that showed that one shisha smoking equals 40 cigarettes smoked. Many people think that shisha smoking has less dangerous effects on the body, the heart, and the brain. However, they're all wrong. Actually, shisha has more profound effects on the heart, the brain, the vascular system, much more than cigarette smoking. Now, cigarette smoking does affect all the organ systems in the body. It does affect the cardiovascular system. It does affect the respiratory system. It has also effects on the neurological system. It does affect the skin and as well the gastrointestinal systems. And then we will be talking about some of the different effects as we go along. The effects of the smoking on the cardiovascular system. Smoking or cigarettes contains a toxic material called nicotine. And this nicotine is a very strong vasoconstrictor of the arteries of the body including the arteries of the heart, which we call them the coronaries, and the arteries of the legs, and as well as the arteries of the brain. Smokers, when they start smoking, they develop what we call a vasospasm or a constriction of the arteries. And with time, that leads to the development of hypertension, this will accelerate the deposition of the cholesterol and the 
uh, uh, bad lipids to the walls of the arteries and with time they develop permanent hypertension and they develop atherosclerosis which manifests later as chest pain or what we call angina heart attacks stroke and claudication or pain in the legs on walking because of the narrowing of the arteries of the legs they also get dilatation of the big pipes in the body like the aorta and that will lead to risk of progressive dilatation and sometimes even rupture and sudden death so all those effects are dangerous and it does affect all the tree of the cardiovascular system not only the heart but all the vasculature in the body now i have to say a point about passive smoking passive smokers are at the same risk as the active smokers and the studies have shown that actually the acceleration of cardiovascular diseases and problems with the heart and vasculature can actually be seen earlier in people who are passive smokers because they inhale the bad substances that are exhaled from the smokers when they sit with them. Now, smoking also has a significant effect on respiratory system. People think always of cancer lung or the lung cancer associated with long smoking, and that's really a serious thing. Problem with cancer of the lung is it is diagnosed late, and unfortunately, it does not respond to conventional treatment of chemotherapy and sometimes radiation therapy. The only chance for survival, if it discovered early, is actually surgical removal of the tumor. However, as I said, this is usually discovered late after the tumor has metastasized and moved to different organ systems, including the spines, the bones, the liver, and the brain. Other effects related to smoking is what we call emphysema, where the tissues of the lungs are replaced with big pockets and sacs of air, destroying the lung tissues and leading to a problem with oxygenation of the body and drop in their oxygen saturation. People who smoke also can get what we call chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, or COPD, manifested by chronic cough, early morning sputum production, and shortness of breath, even on minimal activities compared to non-smoker. This is because of the activation and because of the continuous irritation of the respiratory tract where air passes and uh, the development of chronic inflammation that leads to the mentioned side effects. Now, we have to say also that children of people who smoke or parents who smoke, they have a higher incidence of developing chronic respiratory problems, including asthma and chronic cough because of the inhalation of the toxic materials. If we move on to the neurological system, smoking has a lot of effects on the neurological system. You have to remember that nicotine is a substance that leads to stimulation of the brain. It makes the smoker feels relaxed and happy at the beginning. However, it is removed from the body quickly, replacing the smoker with problem in orientation, concentration, being angry, mad most of the time. The smokers, they have chronic headache, they have irritation, they have disturbances in their sleep, and uh, they feel uh, frustrated and short of breath with uh, activities. The problem is those feelings that they get initiated with the smoking disappears very quickly and replaced by all those side effects that we just uh, mentioned. Smoking also does affect the skin. So it leads to problems with the complexion of the face, to the hair growth, to the nails, to almost all side effects related to the skin. It actually increases the risk of development of skin uh, cancer 
uh, boldness is increased in smokers, and of course, uh, 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 smell of the smoke and the stain of the smoke can be noticed on the hands of the smokers. If we move on to the gastrointestinal tract, interestingly, smoking has a significant effect on the GI tract, starting from the mouth all the way down to the lower GI. People who smoke, they have a higher risk of developing uh, tongue and oral cavity cancer. They, they can develop oropharyngeal cancer, tracheal cancer, esophageal cancer, and even a pancreatic cancer. And the reason behind that is the nicotine is a toxic material that is distributed to all organs in the body, through the heart and the blood, and it can deposit in any system and leads chronically to toxic effects that leads to cancer at the end. So people know about the lung cancer as the most important. However, oropharyngeal cancer all the way throughout the gastrointestinal tract has been reported and has been uh, uh, documented. Also, smoking does affect the production of insulin in the body and increases the risk of the development of type 2 diabetes mellitus. And we have seen a lot of patients who are smokers who later on develop hypertension and then diabetes mellitus. The three combination uh, is, is lethal unless uh, uh, the patient takes care of himself and really quit smoking as, as a start. You have also to know that uh, cigarettes and nicotine does affect the blood flow to all different organs of the body, including the genital areas. And this will lead to impotence, leads to uh, loss of, of uh, uh, interest in the other partner. Uh, it will also lead to reduction in the hormones in both males and females. And uh, as I mentioned, will lead to multiple uh, uh, problems in the uh, in the future with that. Now, you have to know also that if you decide to quit smoking, it's never too late. It's never too late. Studies have shown that if you quit smoking, it takes you an average of one year to return to the baseline risk of developing heart diseases compared to non-smokers. However, for the lung cancer, it takes you approximately 10 years to drop to the risk of non-smokers. It's never been all late to do something good for yourself. Now, how to quit smoking? We have a lot of programs introduced by the Ministry of Health, multiple hospitals. We have a good program in Johns Hopkins here that will try to defend and help you to stop smoking. You have to remember though, that quitting smoking is all based on your intention and willingness to do that. Nobody, no medication, no doctor can help you to quit smoking if you are not interested and dedicated to do that. So the first thing to do is you have to decide that you have to quit. You don't delay it. You don't say after Ramadan, you don't say it after the uh, beginning of the year, you just decide to quit and quit the next day immediately. Now, once you decide on a specific date, you will be committed to do that. And this will definitely show that you have a strong personality and a strong uh, attention to do. Now, most people, they fail to do that because they start with no strong intention to stop smoking. They listen to stories from other people that they have failed or they could not do it, and they assume that they are going to fail at the beginning. And this is wrong. I think you have really to assume that you will be successful. If others can do it, you can do it. And you have to persist and follow the ways that has been shown to help you quit smoking. Some of them are, first, go and see a doctor. Go and see the smoking cessation clinic. The doctor can talk to you. He will understand your psychological and metabolic uh, and medical needs and he can help you with that. We have a lot of substitutes for nicotine. At the beginning of the abstinence, you need a nicotine supplement to help you quit smoking. And then we have a lot of them, from the patches, to medications, to pills, to gums. These are all can help you 
to quit smoking, especially in the beginning of the, of the trial. Second, you have to remember that quit smoking is not an easy trip. There are a lot of withdrawal side effects that you will go through, including headache, loss of concentration, um, disturbances with, uh, with sleeping, uh, interaction with other people, being angry uh, sometimes, and uh, these are all expected after you quit smoking, especially in the first two to three weeks after that. However, the good news is if you persist and continue and refuse to smoke, those side effects will gradually disappear until they're completely gone. So we have to know that it is not an easy trip and you have to work hard to achieve the success which you can do. Next, you have to remove everything that reminds you with the smoking. You have to remove the cigarettes from the house. You have to remove the matches. You have to remove the lighters. Even the ashtrays, you have to remove them all because they will all remind you in your car, in your house, and then with your friends. You cannot stay with people who continue to smoke because eventually you will go back to smoking. I have seen lots of patients who had a heart attack and they decided to quit and they managed to do that. However, in three months time or six months time, they're all back to smoking. And the reason is the people they sit with all the time because they're smokers and they continue to sit with smokers. So I think staying away from people who smoke is a very, very important step if you are willing to stop uh, smoking. Now, you can also help your friends and the others to quit smoking by telling them all the good things about uh, 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 smoking cessation and the uh, benefits of that to your system and to the whole community actually. Now, the last thing I would like to stress in is you have to perform some kind of sport, walking, jogging, getting involved in exercise program. This has been shown that it will reduce the side effects of the withdrawal from smoking. It will help your personality. It will develop a good uh, body uh, uh, flow of blood and circulations that will reduce the side effects of the smoking, improve your psychological uh, balances, and definitely help you continue on the right path. Uh, I have to tell you that uh, also from the uh, Islamic point of view, apart from the financial and the cultural and the social problems of smoking, from the Islamic point of view as well, smoking is considered haram. Smoking is considered something that damages your health, wastes your money, and affects yourself and everybody who lives with you. And this is in Islam is forbidden and should not be uh, done by uh, uh, somebody who understands the uh, Islam. I hope this is a short summary of the effects of smoking, and I hope that we will, this will help people consider to quit and reduce the risks for themselves and for their families and have a healthier lifestyle. Thank you very much.